Good evening, New Unity. We welcome and honor each of you for serving with us tonight for our Lenten 2023 service, a season of renewal, of reflection, and of preparation. The heed to the call of obedience. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Isaiah 58 verse one. We'll now be led with our evening hymn, Draw Me Near by our choral ministry. We encourage each of you to sing along with us. I am thine, O oh Lord, that has heard my voice and it told thy love to me. But I love to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power May my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my spirit be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. nearer blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding son. Be light of a single hour that before oh, thy throne I, I stand. When I knew in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Beautiful. I mean, nearer, say it, nearer, blessed. blessed Lord, to the cross uh, where uh, I nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. To the precious There are depths of love that I cannot go till I cross the narrow sea. Heights. There are heights of joy that I may not reach. Will I rest? Peace mm -hmm. with thee. Join in church. Draw me near. Near, blessed Lord, to the cross our prayer tonight amen. amen that the lord would draw us nearer nearer to him even now we're thanking the lord once again for how he has blessed us on this great ash wednesday evening our scripture for the evening comes from the old testament book of isaiah isaiah chapter 58 verses 2 through 9 which has been our reading all day long and our reflections on time during this great new unity day of Ash Wednesday. Yeah. Isaiah 58 verse two reads, and yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse three. Wherefore, have we fasted 
say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore, have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your laborers. Behold, ye fast for strife, and uh -huh. debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Yeah. Yea, shall not fast ye do this day, uh -huh. to make your voice be heard on high. It is, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes upon him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? It is this, it not, there is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, yeah. and to let the oppressed go free. I so. And that ye break every yoke. Mama. Seven. It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry. Yeah. And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. Three. When thou seest the naked, that thou clotheth him, and that thou hideth not thyself from thy flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. Good God. And thou health shall spring forth speedily. Speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be thou re reward. And verse nine, then shalt thou call. And the Lord shall answer. Say so. Thou shalt cry. And he shall say, here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke mm. and the putting forth of the finger yeah. and the speaking vanity, the word of God for the people of God. Say so. Amen and amen. We now call upon our finance ministry that they might lead us further in our giving and worship. Deacon Thomas, the mic is yours. Good evening, New Unity. We're gonna prepare this time to give our evening's offering. As we begin this first of our seven weeks of Lent, we're asking that you bring each week your special Lent offering of no less than $7 weekly. We thank all of those who have already given the entire seven weeks and also for those who gave on this past Sunday. We are indeed grateful for your financial support. Our two ways in which you can give is our cash app, dollar sign New Unity Baltimore, or you can mail in to PO Box 313, Chase Merlin 21027. Now let us pray. Father God, we give to you tonight with joy and we give into your kingdom. We ask that you bless our special gifts and you will work through us through our giving. We thank you and we praise your name. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. And now we call upon our pastor to lead us in our prayers for our blood droplets, the consecration of our ashes, and of the oil. Pastor Golden. Amen. Good evening, New Unity. God be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So uh, glad to see each of you this evening. Grateful that you are here. Share who, if you can play lead for me, lead me to Calvary yet again, if that's available, I would appreciate it. But thank every one of you for being here tonight. Amen. Now, here's what I'm asking you to do, if you would. I have the ashes here, which are the fronds from last year. That's to say the, the palm leaf. And we uh, grateful to uh, Chair High Emeritus, amen, that she's burned those now and they have formed the ashes. We will, will apply to our heads, our foreheads momentarily with the sign of the cross as we offer these words from dust you have come and some dust you shall return, amen. Blessed be the name of, of the Lord. I'm asking you now to also locate your blood droplets if you have them. If you don't have them, then would you just take a moment to uh, locate that white bag? Let me get it for you. Yeah, yeah, I gave us a white bag and have yours or see where it is. Mine says Pastor the Golden Ashes to Wednesday and all the rest on there. And so somewhere in that white bag, amen, there's a plastic, no, but it's an um, envelope this year, amen. And uh, 
They had the blood drops. Locate those, would you? Would you please? And then thirdly, locate your Bible. Would you please? We're going to be reading that scripture yet again. Isaiah 58. You want to bookmark it? You do so. We're going to be reading it yet again. While our service will have ended. Isaiah 58. Amen. Almost in the middle of your Bible, right past Psalms and Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon. And you'll find the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. So the Bible, the blood droplets, I have the ashes. And one more thing. There is one other thing. The pastor goes, he said three, four. If you have your container of oil, you have your oil, um, your vessel, let me put it that way. Your vessel of oil, it may be in a, a regular bottle. You may have it in a perfume bottle, so, sort of an alabaster box. But whatever it is, locate that oil if you can. If you cannot, not a problem. But if you can, please, as much as possible, take a moment now as we're talking, as we're sharing, to locate that oil. Locate your blood droplet, locate your Bible, and uh, the ashes pastor has. So let me say that again. We're asking everybody to locate their Bibles, locate your oil, locate your blood droplet. I have the, the ashes here, as you can see. These are from the palms. Let me get the palms here and show you those. These are the palms that we had on last year. On Palm Sunday, what we do every year, we take some of those palms, we hold them over, we keep them, and these are from last year, and we burn them. And these are what we call a, a fancy word, a frond, F-R-O-N-D, palm leaf, a frond. We take the fronds and we burn them, and then we make the ashes that we apply to our foreheads in the sign of the cross. When death you have come, you were born, and from dust you shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. As we form the sign of the uh, of the cross on our forehead. So now we've got the palms that have been made into our into our uh, ashes. We have our blood droplets. Amen. We have our oil. And we have our Bible. Amen. 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 Grateful to God for all of you being here tonight as we're coming. Now with our Blood drops. If this is a song, if you have your hymn book and say, Pastor, go ahead and get in the, get in the if you have it, that's an if. Turn to page hymn 81. Is that 81? I think it's 81. You know, this is one of those songs, Brother Dixon, you only sing at Christmas time. Some songs like uh, Oh Holy Night, you only sing at Christmas time. This is one of those type songs that oftentimes we only sing at uh, during the Lenten season. Yes, 81. And so it's playing in the background just so you can see the words and you want to hum along or sing along uh, with the music. It's fine. Amen. But it says, King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crowned brow. What lead me to Calvary? That's the whole emphasis of, of uh, Lent and of this song reminding us we're being led to Calvary. Yes, we are. Show me the tomb where thou was laid, tenderly mourned and wept. Angels in robes of light array guarded thee whilst I slept. Talking about Jesus, amen. Lead me to Calvary. And then the third stanza, let me like Mary through, lead me, let me like Mary through the tomb, to the tomb. Come with a gift to thee. Go me, go to me now the empty tomb. Lead me to Calvary. In the last stanza, say, May I be willing, Lord, to bear barely my cross for thee. Even now, thy cup of grief to share, thou hast borne all for me. Lead me to Calvary. So, as we're coming now, uh, church, all of us, as we're coming, we're preparing. Have your bottles of oil. Amen. Them. Amen. As we're preparing, bless. Amen. Our oil. Take your droplet now. Take a pen. Amen. Write a prayer request each week for the next seven weeks, all the way up to Good Friday. This is personal between you and the Lord. Whatever the Spirit is speaking to your heart about, it could be about family, and that's usually one of the first things we think about, isn't it? Because that's what's most dear to us, our families. It could be about our health, or it could be the health of a loved one. Amen. It could be about salvation. We want to see our uh, beloved in heaven when we leave here and when they leave here and so it could be for salvation it could be about standing in proxy for someone it 
could be for this world that we are living in, right? With so many things happening. Yesterday, it was almost like a tornado for five minutes. The wind came through and just blew everything. I mean, blew the trash can all over my neighbor's yard. And I tried to go out there and get as much as I could. I mean, it just blew uh, trash can tops. Uh, yesterday was pickup trash for us, pickup day. And so tops were flying down the street and neighbor's yard and over the fence. And, and then tomorrow, it's supposed to be 80. Uh, we don't know what's going on or do we? Cataclysmic weather, weather we say, amen. And so all sorts of things in the political arena, in the climatic, in the in the climate, amen, uh, in the social arena, uh, in the church, uh, so many things that we could pray for. Whatever you want to put down here, you do so. You can use both sides of it, both sides of it, amen. I put it on mine on the cross and mine was symbolized for all of us. So I'm standing as the priest, amen. The priest is that what? That intercessor who goes before God on what? On behalf of the people, on behalf of the adherents. You know what? Something that he adheres, something that sticks, right? And so as we adhere uh, to the faith, amen, the adherence, uh, whatever it is that you want to put on there, we got seven weeks of doing this, amen. And I'm going to ask you that from this week to next week, uh, get it in your mind, Lord, what is it? Just like the message, Lord. What are you saying to me, Lord, in the message tonight? And then, Lord, secondly, what am I supposed to do? What is my response to it? And so as I listen to the message, to the song, to the giving, to the sharing tonight, amen. Lord, what are you saying to me? And then what should my response be? And next son, next week, we go deeper, right? Oh, I wish I could teach and preach out of one of the greatest books I've ever read called The Divine Comedy by an Italian fellow by the name of Dante Alighieri, written in the year 1300, over 800 years ago, as he began his descent into Hades and then into Purgatory and into Paradiso Paradise. This book that he wrote, wrote 14,233 lines of poetry. I love every line of it, amen. Magnificent book. Um, but uh, we are going deeper. What are you saying, Pastor? Each week we're going deeper. We're going deeper. We're going deeper. First night. Next week, we go a little bit deeper. The third week, we go a little bit deeper. The fourth week, we're about halfway then. That's the fourth. That's the halfway mark. We, we call them the mean, right? As many above as it is below, the mean. We go toward the mean. Then we go past the, the fifth week, the sixth week. Then finally, that, that week of culmination, amen, Good Friday. So as we do it. So you've written your, your prayer request uh, on there, amen. Hallelujah. So Lord, lift them up, won't you, church? Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we place our petition on our blood droplets, thank you for the blood. Oh, the blood done signed our name. Oh, we're grateful for you, Lord. Thank you for dying as we are getting ready now. Hallelujah. To, pos to, to position our hearts and our minds toward Calvary. Lead us to Calvary. Whatever the need, whatever the request, whatever the supplication, we ask your God to receive it a heart of gratitude, a heart of redemption. Yes, even as our theme says, Lord, heart that we are seeding a renewal, reflection, preparation. Thank you, even now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we take these bottles of oil. We lift them up. We consecrate this oil, whatever container, vessel you have yours in, Consecrate this oil, Lord, as we, over these next 40 days and beyond, over this next year, Lord, as we anoint heads and sick bodies and distressed minds and even vehicles and beds and doorknobs and windows and grandchildren and husbands and wives and wallets and pocketbooks and checkbooks and anything that's in distress lord we are we, we believe in anointing not that there's any special magic we don't believe in that but just as a point of contact just as a point of contact in the unity nothing nothing magical in it but there's power in it there's power in it and so we anoint it amen we anoint our our tongues to preach amen hallelujah with the oil we anoint our heads amen remember the priest anointed his big his ear he anointed his big a thumb on his right hand and he anointed his big toe amen a great message there without the preset one day knowing what you can do with your hand how to think right with your mind and where and how, how you're going to walk in the name of god and then lastly now we come with the, with the ashes 
apply them to our forehead. And in fact, we apply them to each one of us in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son. From thus you have come, and thus you shall return. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, let the church say amen. Let that play through for just one more time, leader, please. Lead me. Yeah. Be willing, Lord. Lord. Daily. My cross. That's what Luke says. Pick up his cross daily. That's Luke. Oh, yeah. Thou hast all for me. Come on, church, everybody. Come on. I forget. Come on, church. In me. Hoover's going to open all your mics. You be prepared. If your mic is open, she'll know you're ready to speak. If it's closed, then she will just continue on. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Please observe this. Just 30 seconds. To say a word. Amen. Now, this is a testimony in terms of Lent, right? In terms of Lent, you may want to share. You don't have to share your personal stuff, but you may want to say a word. 30 seconds, church. Please, everyone, observe. And then we're going to ask you, Brother Dixon, to come with your song for the evening, and then Pastor Golden will come with the prayer. Amen. And so she'll call your name, and I think everybody that will participate, uh, everyone, I only see Brother Randolph, the only person I see unmuted. Amen. Anybody else going to share with us tonight? Amen. Asking everyone if you would. Amen. So that we'll be ready when she comes to you. Just to say a word as we come to this night uh, in Lent. Amen. All right, Cheryl Hoover. Thank you so very, very much. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, praise God and thanking God even now. God bless you, Pastor. So new unity come now with these words of Lenten thanksgiving and reflection. Deacon Randolph, we see your mic open, brother. Doing good evening. Well, I do say uh, we thank God from the bottom of, in the depths of our heart and our soul for the opportunity to uh, share that in this service again another year uh, and we thank God of course we would be remiss if we didn't thank him for the return of the prodigal son our yeah. son Nicholas as well but this is one of this is one of the most sacred and holiest of times we're grateful just to be here yet again amen and amen Deacon High we see your mic good evening all to my pastor can you, pull your, can you pull your camera down just a little teeny bit, Deacon High? Just a, there we go. And that's perfect. Now we can see that beautiful uh, uh, face. Grandkids were playing with my mic. I mean, my iPad over the weekend, and that yes. all helped us out. No but problem. anyway, no problem. <laughs> I am so honored, so honored, and so thankful to the Lord that I had the opportunity to burn the, uh, the, the uh, palm from last year. Yeah. And to submit to pastor the ashes for this year. Yeah. I don't take that responsibility lightly. Yeah. And I just feel so wonderful each time I, I burn them. I remember Jesus on the cross mm -hmm. a week after they laid the palms. Amen. And I'm just thankful. I am so thankful. God bless you all. Amen and amen. Minister Zen Smith, we see your mic. 
I am just so thankful to God for this opportunity that we have to come together in sacrifice and prayer unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. 124 delegation. We see your mic open. Who's going to go first? Good morning, my beautiful family. Good morning, God. Thank Good evening, God. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for us having a beautiful, blessed life. And this is Sister Hilda. Christine. Christine, you speak. Say good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Sister Christine. So good to hear your voice as well. We thank God for you. Anyone else in that delegation with you, Sister yeah. Hilda? Good evening. My name is Laverne. I want to say I'm blessed. And I want to thank you so much for inviting me down here tonight. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have you, Sister Laverne. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One second. One second. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. To step in on this uh, evening and get some of this good feeling. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. We're so glad Thank to have you. Oh, one, more, one moment, Hold brother, on, brother Barrett. Barrett. Hold on. Hold on, brother Barrett. We got you. Hold on, please. Sister Hilda, did we did we get everyone? Is there anyone no, else no. that wants to There's share? One. There's two more, sister. Go ahead. Go right Go. ahead. Go right ahead. It's Mary, and I'm so glad to be with y'all tonight. And I praise God every day. And just thank you for having me. Praise the Lord, Sister Mary. It's good to hear your voice. One more. God bless uh -huh. you. And who's the last one? God knows. We want to hear you. Jane, Janie Alexander. And I just praise the Lord. God bless you all. Thank the Lord for you. Janie brought us all together. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank, Thank God for Janie, the missionary. Yes, yeah, she's a missionary. Amen. Amen. Sister Thelma, we see your microphone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I am Pastor Golden Member Wanda, giving honor to God. I thank the Lord for blessing me and my family that he woke us up this morning. Yeah. And I also thank God for blessing me that I was able to make another Ash Wednesday service. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Deacon Palin, we see your mic. Good evening, Pastor Golden. First Lady Wanda Golden in her absence. Uh, I am great. Oh, I see her there. She just down on the camera. God bless you. I am grateful for this time of atonement, you know, where we are searching ourselves and cleansing our ways and repenting, you know, for all the things that we didn't get done you know, in following the Lord's word. So I'm just grateful. I read the scripture twice today. I didn't read it once. I read it twice today. Beautiful, beautiful. And it did speak to me, you know, about the strife and the just loosening this and letting it go. So I'm just grateful. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Deacon. Lady Golden, we see your mic. Good evening to all. I'm just so grateful to God for this particular service that you know, reflection and just getting closer to God. Yeah. Moment. And I treasure the fact that we are all in this together. As I look, get, look out over this, this Zoom space here and I see your faces and that we are all indeed striving to get closer to God. Yeah. And I'm strengthened by your presence and you're strengthened by mine. And I just thank and praise God for the moment. Amen. God bless you. Amen and amen. God bless you, lady. Dixon family, we see your mic. This is uh, Sister Porter here. One sec, Mother Porter, one sec. Praise God, Pastor and uh, First Lady. Thank God for you, amen. We are uh, praying myself for guidance and for strength, praying that I will go closer and closer to the Lord, that he would... Uh, uh, just give me that daily closeness with them in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen and amen. Praising God amen. even now. Deacon Porter. Praise God. All God's children. I just want to say I thank God for 90 years, 90 plus, that he has allowed me to be on this land. I thank him how he has kept me down through the years, God has been good to me and my family, and I thank him for it. I thank him for the good times. I thank him for the bad times, 
know the bedtime's going to work good for my family and my church. And I just pray that you all will continue to hold, hold out and hold to God's unchanging hand because can't nobody do you like Jesus. And I thank him for his love and his protection. And I ask him just to continue to keep on keeping us and that we all may be able to walk in Jerusalem just like John, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, Mother. Are there any others that we may have omitted? Brother Derek, did you want to speak? And yes. share, about, share um, during this I, moment of reflection about Lent? Um, is, this, is this Women's Fellowship? No, Brother Derek. You're oh, okay. It's men and women. You come okay. right ahead. You have a word you want to say about during this Lenten season? Yes, um, the final sentence. Um, um, I have, um, I would like to um, um, praise praise God and thank you for this Lenten season, and thank thank thank, the, thank God that everybody's safe. Yeah. And blessed and blessed and thank the Lord that uh, that I that um, I, I got a mock interview tomorrow. Mock interview tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll, I'll probably start a new job. I, I start my job paid job training next month. We believe by faith. And thank the Lord that. I make it this far and, and, and thank the Lord Jesus. Um, I, I was tempted by the devil on one like, 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 like Monday. Yeah, and you um, resist I, 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 him and he'll flee, brother Derek. We thank you for your word tonight. And we honor God and how He continues to use you, brother Jeffrey. Did you want to share? Yeah, good evening, Sister Merrill. I, I just want to thank God for blessing me, but see, for. Thank God for blessing me to see it and it's Wednesday. Yeah. And I just just continue to pray for my family, bless my entire family. And all these things I should know my will, but will will be done in Jesus' Amen. name. I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Jeffrey. We're rounding out. Any of our telephone people I don't want to admit anyone, anyone who might want to star six on their phones. And share some 30 second as our pastor has shared reflection during this Lenten season. Yeah, I think we have two of our deacons, Deacon Thomas and Thomas. I don't know okay. if I heard from uh, I'm sorry. Vanessa I'm and Rhonda. The box has moved again. So sorry. Deacon Van Vanessa Good Thomas, morning. we see Good your evening. mic now. Good evening to all. I just want to say I'm grateful tonight to God for his many, many blessings as I reflect on. 2022 being hit with a health challenge and yeah. coming into 2023. Three, God has indeed proved himself faithful, and I just thank him for his healing power, for his keeping power, and just glad to be a part in the number again this year. Amen. Amen and amen. Deacon Rhonda Thomas, we see your mic. Good evening, everyone. I just think of Lent as a time of reflection, um, you know, the 40 days leading up to all the, the events that, um, that Jesus Jesus went through um, the death and then the resurrection. So uh, this is a very, uh, very emotional time, but then it's a happy time because um, on that third day, he did get up. Hallelujah. Are there any others praising God even now, thanking the Lord? Sister Arnell Colvin, did we miss you? Sister Arnell, you want to share? Yeah. Good, after, good evening, everyone, Pastor Golden, Reverend Wanda Golden, and an entire New Unity Church. I'm praying and thanking God that he gave us another chance of getting right with, with him. Yeah. Thank you, God, for dying on the cross for our sins. Oh, yeah. We still have a chance to walk with you to have eternal life. Yeah. Amen and amen. Thanking God even now and praising him. We'll now have our brother Dixon who will be coming forward and giving us our evening uh, sermonic selection. And as he comes, we do thank God for this wonderful time of Lent and this time of reflection and this time that we can look inwardly within ourselves and we can say, Lord, help us to do better. Remember that prayers we prayed when we were children, help us, Lord, to do our best. And that's what we want to do. Never becoming sleepy or smug or satisfied that this is a time of renewal and revival. So Brother Francis. 
before you before he said okay. francis give me just one moment i just want to be sure that everyone deacon uh, the bennett family deacon john kearney sister cassandra sister nadine sister denise huntley any sister tanya sky just want to be sure that everyone knows that they have an opportunity if you want if you want the bennett family deacon kearney uh sister tanya sister cassandra sister nadine jackson any of you all right, Brother Dixon, go right ahead. I know you may want to say something also, Brother Dixon, right after your mother had spoke. We we went to someone else, but you got her, the microphone is all yours now, sir. Hey, Amen. I just want to first say I thank God for saving me. I thank God for keeping me throughout yeah. life and struggles and, and situations. Um, I pray that um, God will continue to lead me and give me direction and uh, show me the path that he wants me to walk yes, in this life. So I'm going to do a little bit of at the cross. Amen, amen, and amen again. Let the church say amen. Come on, say it again, church. Come on, open your mouths, everyone. Say it, amen. Do you good, amen. God be praised. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Delighted to see and to greet each of you here this evening, and even those who are sharing with us by Facebook or whatever social media platform you may be on. Thank you for joining in this first of seven Lenten services throughout this a year of 20 and 23. I sometimes say 20 and 22. Haven't quite gotten in here. We're almost into March, but 20 and 23. And we're grateful for the Lord for all of his goodness, all of his blessings, blessings to us, aren't we? Somebody again say amen. You have your Bibles. Amen. I want you to turn with me. Won't you please? You have your blood droplets. You have your oil. I have the ashes. You have your Bible. Amen. We're turning to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is this great minister. Dixon saluting you and the family on Sunday, Sunday and all the rest. This great celebration Isaiah talks about, it is the second longest book in the Bible. The, the song book, the hymn book is the longest. That is the book of Psalm, amen, or Psalms with an S. Either way you say Psalm, one hymn, or Psalms, 
with many hymns, either way it's, it is pronounced properly with or without the S on the end, the book of Psalm or the book of Psalms, amen, and that's the longest, but after the book of Psalms comes this mighty eagle-eyed prophet by the name of Isaiah, and what a wonderful prophet he is. He gives us this magnificent word, a virgin shall conceive and be with child. He shall call his name Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah, and he talks in all these majestic, eloquent words. He fills us with great poetry and great pageantry, and uh, he positions God as the as supreme throughout all. He gives us that magnificent Magnificent sixth chapter. If you haven't read it lately, go read it again. How the angels and the seraphims are flying. Can you just get a picture of that? Flying to and fro in heaven, and they are crying, Holy, 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 which was and is and which was to come. And he sees the 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 door of the temple shake, the smoke, the Shekinah glory of God. That's all from this magnificent prophet Isaiah. And what a magnificent writer he is in that 40th chapter he tells us comfort ye my children saith the lord though uh, and god's going to give you double for your sins and all the way through isaiah we have that suffering servant servant motif in chapter 50 23 where he talks about that suffering servant wounded for our transgression bruised for our iniquity chastisement of what your peace and mind of our peace was upon him this suffering servant and by his stripes we are what we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all and you cannot read verse 7 without my goodness getting full of all sorts of emotions huh? and it pleased god to bruise him my goodness and mercy well there's so much in this magnificent writer's uh, uh missive that's a fancy word for letter his his fantastic missive to us so tonight i want to look at this isaiah you have your bibles with how many you have your bibles hold them up if you don't mind if you even if you're using a, a, a phone or a tablet it's okay you're using a tablet or media uh social uh, not a social media but a digital platform that's okay you got the word as long as you got it where Deep down in my heart, I got the love of Jesus, right? Because why is that, Pastor Golden? Because thy word have I hid in my heart, not in my cell phone. <laughs> but thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. And Lord, we thank you tonight. Oh, yes. We feel the weight of this, of this message and the weight of these next coming weeks. We expect the 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 cross to get heavier yes we do uh next week to be heavier than it is tonight and the following week and every successive week to feel the weight of you on that via della rosa that road of sorrow maybe we'll talk about that one 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 of these uh wednesdays uh the many roads that we carry and uh maybe you'll read robert frost's poem where, he's, where he talked about two roads converge and i choose and i chose the path amen that was least uh, tread upon amen isaiah 58 bless your name lord in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen and amen and amen again many thanks and appreciation to all of our ministry leaders here tonight to each, each of you individually and collectively pastor golden first lady wanda golden say thanks Special thanks to you, our Administrator Deacon Tamara Randolph, for pulling our bulletin together at such short notice. To you, Chair Hoover, to you, CFO Deacon uh, Stephen Elsa Thomas, uh, to Chair and Vice Chair Millicent Hoover and John Robert Kearney. Uh, in absentia, but sending her offering, her offering and her tithe on Sunday past, and being the first one, probably around three o'clock this afternoon, sending in her Lenten service even though she's on vacation in florida she still remembers her church and her call to responsibility and action minister Catherine giles and to you sister peggy butler i pass the golden trust and pray that you new unity every one of you heard you uh deacon dean denise palin saying you read the scriptures twice today i trust and pray that every you every one of us found some time in this day to read to receive and to reflect 
on the Lenten scriptures with Minister Catherine Giles selected for reading and spiritual growth. And if for some reason, because of the, the crush of the day and the press of the hour, you find yourself unavailable to, to, to get your Bible or your phone or whatever to read it, I pray that before you go to bed tonight in your quiet hour, in your quiet moment, you'll take some time to reflect on those scriptures tonight in Isaiah chapter 58. As each of you know by now, Lent is the 40 days of introspection, wherein the adherents, we used that word earlier, those who stick, something that he adheres sticks, such as glue, where, wherein the adherents of the faith look inward at ourselves and declare these words, say it with me, it's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It is a time of interminable repentance, incessant sacrifice, and intentional giving. I struggle with our, with our theme because I normally would like to have gone with three R's, but I was moved when Chair Hoover and Deacon Kearney, Vice Chair and Minister uh, Giles and Butler came together and we were looking at this uh, theme for this year. We, my, my mind went to a season of renewal, reflection and repentance, but we chose the word preparation as opposed to an, another RE word. And the reason I believe we went with this preparation word tonight because we are getting prepared for some great things ahead. We're getting ready for some conflict, conflict within our soul. But even in the conflict of our souls, we know that through the crucifixion, through the Lent season, through the uh, time of what? Denial, through the time of what? Sacrifice, through the time of what? Giving. Let me read that again interminable which means that it does not end repentance incessant sacrifice it goes on and it costs it costs us something to sacrifice and we're not just talking about our pocketbook we're talking about the time that we will spend over these next 40 days where we've been watching movies and there's nothing wrong with that we've been doing this that and other there's nothing wrong with that but we're going to cut back somebody write it down even tonight cut back reduce just like we do in the conservation program amen we're going to conserve amen our time our energy and give God the best that we've got. I never shall forget when I was uh, at the new shallow church and Pastor Carter had said to me, Golden, won't you return to school? And I said, yes, sir. I'd already been in college. He said, I want you to go back and finish up. And, and I said, yes, sir. And I went and signed up for my courses. And he said to me a week or two later, are you ready? Are you set? I said, yes, sir. I'll be going next Tuesday night. He said, oh, no, 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 Golden. Absolutely not. Don't want you going at night after the day is, uh, you don't spend all the day and you're tired and your mind is a sluggish. I want you to go and do it during the day when your mind is fresh and open and you can hear and receive all the things that your instructors are, are, are saying to you. I have, I have never forgotten that. I am ever grateful and indebted to him and the great people of the New Shallow Baptist Church for that, uh, for that opportunity, not only to return to school, but to go when my mind was open and fresh. And I want to say to you and me, brothers and sisters, this, this time of repentance, this time of sacrifice, this time of intentional giving, we do it with an open mind. Somebody say, man, we do it with the clarity of understanding what we're doing. This is not something that Pastor Golden is trying to dupe you in. I'm going to say it three times so you saw it, so you know I'm not trying. This is interminable, uh, interminable repentance, incessant, not stopping sacrifice and intentional giving. During this time, we cut back on the television. We cut back on other social activities. We cut back on things. We get our books. We get our Bible. Don't have to be the Bible. Bible necessarily, but certainly something spiritual, something that will feed our mind, put the novels aside, put the other things aside. And now with somebody say it with me, with intentionality. I hope you, you're writing these things down. Indeed, I should have asked you to get one more thing tonight, and that is your pen. I asked you to get your oil uh, so you could be anointed, get the ashes so that you would have the sign of the cross on your forehead to get your Bible. Thy word have I hid in my heart, the B-I-B-L-E. I take along with me. I read and pray and then obey the B-I-B-L-E. E, yes, and our, uh, our blood drops us. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood done sign my name. But you ought to have a pen that you can write these things down because there is a book of remembrance. God has written down 
prayers that you and I have offered to him, praises that you and I have celebrated him with somebody ought to help me preach tonight. I know it's a time that we look introspectively. We wear our dark attire. We come uh, humble. We come with, with, sac with um, uh, what's the word I want to use here? A symbolic, symbolic uh, of uh, sackcloth and ashes. We come with the ashes on our forehead. We come in humility. We come with a, a, uh, the, the gravity, that is to say the weight, you know, gravity pull things down here on earth, doesn't it? The weight of it, the gravity of it, of him dying, of him on that cross, bleeding, crying out, my God, my God, Psalms 20, 22, why all of these uh, uh, sayings that we'll get to on Good Friday, we feel the gravity, the weight of it, but oh, we're asking you as we are doing, going forth that we would now get out, put our whole person into the service. Our focus this year, beginning today, Ash Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, through Good Friday, April 6, 2023, write it down, a season of renewal, a season of reflection, a season of repentance. If you want to put three R's, fine, but we are saying a, a season of preparation. We find ourselves in the book of Isaiah, as we've already given just a little introduction of this great prophet, uh, eagle-eyed prophet's words. Listen to the words as Isaiah cries them out. I'm reading tonight out of the Living Bible. You follow in whatever version of the Bible you have with us tonight. Here this text says, cry loud, shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Tell my people their sins. Tell us the very thing that we do not want to hear. We call ourselves in America, what? A Christian nation. We say that we are not infidels. We say that we are not pagans. We say that we are lovers of God. We say that we are, that we are not lost. And yet here God tells uh, the prophet Isaiah, say to my people, my chosen people, my Israel nation, my Hebrew people, these descendants of Israel, they have sinned. Tell my people their sin. Uh, they act so pious. They act so saved. They go around with their solemn faces, uh, looking like they are uh, uh, all together right. But uh, they come to the temple every day. In our case, on Wednesday, they're coming to the church every Wednesday night at seven o'clock. And be sure, brothers and sisters, you let somebody when you talk to them tomorrow. Where were you last night? Why we had we had sir? I didn't know. Yes, yes. It started. Lent started. And in the New Unity Church, we come every uh, Ash Wednesday with the oil on our head, with the f ashes on our head, with our blood droplets. And we're going to do it again next week. So if you missed tonight, you can come. Please join us, brothers and sisters and neighbors and friends and loved ones. Be sure you get the word out because here Isaiah says, tell my people their sins. They're acting so religious. They're coming to the church every day. You see it? And they are so delighted uh, to read Isaiah 58. They're reading the scriptures uh, uh, that Minister Giles has given to us. They've got the scriptures for next week. She's given to all eight weeks, seven weeks rather. And we've got them. We're all excited about it. But what does it mean? What does it profit us if we will not take and apply this scripture? If it simply becomes a ritual, somebody write this down. No ritual is more than a ritual, but it is what a relationship. Write it down. No ritual but it is all about relationship. We are trying to get closer to God. We are coming uh, with our hearts heavy, heavy in the sense of we know we have sinned. We don't need anybody to tell us necessarily, but he reminds us, uh, doesn't he, that all of us like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone um, uh, our own way. We know it. We, You know what you've done. I know what I've done. And so we're coming trying to get in what? A right relationship. That's it. Write it down. Now, here it is. It's not a ritual. It's about a relationship. And the relationship is designed with the third R to get us into a right relationship, a right position with God. Amen. And so he says, now you're coming to the temple every day uh, and you're so ex excited about hearing the scriptures and reading the laws uh, just as though you would you obey them. You're reading them, he said, in other words, but you're not you're not following through them just as though they don't despise the commandments of their God. How anxious are they to worship correctly? 
Oh, they love to come to sing, uh, lest I forget Gethsemane. Read it. There it is. Isaiah says in chapter 58 and verse 2, how anxious are they to come with their dark suits and with their red and, and all their foreheads with the ashes and the oil and all of the all of their accoutrements, uh, as a French term, all of the things, uh, all of the uh, accessories that go with worship and do those things correctly. Oh, how they love this. Uh, but mm, he says, uh, do you say we have fasted, Lord? Uh, but you aren't impressed. They get them. Uh, look at this. The people are upset with God. Have you ever been upset with God? Come on, talk to me. Have you ever been? I mean, I can hear you, but God can hear you. Come on here. Have you ever been angry with God? Uh, uh, you remember Jonah? Jonah got mad with God. I don't want to go talk to them people in, in Nineveh. Elijah got upset with God. He went down by the river and said, I ain't nobody serving you but me. Uh, Jeremiah said, oh, that I had been stillborn. Uh, oh, cursed be the man that came to my father and said unto him, blessed unto you, a male child is born. Oh, that I was stillborn. Oh, that my head, one of the great chapters of one of the great poetic lines in all of scripture. Oh, that my head were water, uh, were, were, were waters in my eyes with a fountain of tears. Uh, that's a great poetic uh, uh, writing that he has there. Uh, all of this he says, uh, uh, why? Uh, they want to know, why aren't you impressed with the fact we sacrifice? We could be home, we could be out somewhere, could be at the, the Turk or whatever, that tur the green turtle eating some chicken wings. Uh, we could be watching television. Some of y'all got it on now. Turn it off. Uh, get off that sofa and focus on the word of God. <clears throat> Here it is uh, with your whole heart, with a singleness of heart, with a singleness. Forget the television. Forget all that stuff. Turn it off. Uh, focus on God. Don't worry about the other things uh, that are going on. Somebody we used to sing, Brother Dixon, you know the, <clears throat> the song. Your mother certainly knows. Your aunt uh, that I saw know, know the song. Uh, take this old world, but give me Jesus. Uh, the cross before me, the world behind me. Come on, New Unity. We're talking about getting to Calvary now. And I know it's difficult because this is just the first week. And after doing all we've been doing, we done went through Thanksgiving and gained another seven pounds. We done went through Christmas and, and had all of that, fa all of that excitement of family and, and the relationship. And that's all well and good. We done went through New Year's Eve, watch night, New Year's Day, all the bowl games, the college and all the rest of that. Had a good time. We done went through the Super Bowl. And now all of a sudden we got to pull all that back. All that excitement we've been going through, eating and face feasting and enjoy, and that's all has its place. But now all of that's got to come. We come and come to a place now where we are focusing on God. We got to come to a place where we where where, where everything else is second. We got to come to a place where God is primary, and that 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 He is not only pri primary, but He is preeminent, which means not only is He eminent, which means great, which means superb, but He's preeminent. <coughs> Pardon me, pre meaning before and so before anything else we got to put God there they say to him in verse 3 you got it we done fasted before you they say so but why aren't you impressed Lord why don't you see our sacrifices here we giving our fifty dollars our seven dollars some of us going to go as much as ten dollars some of us may even go beyond that why aren't you impressed about that sister Vanessa ain't said nothing about my money ain't nobody uh, applauded my back uh why don't you hear us look at here sir when we praying lord you act like we are out here we could be doing a whole lot of thing other things than, and you act like you're not you're not pleased with it Mm. And so God speaks to them. Come on here, Golden. And let's talk to the people of God. Uh, have uh, we done? Uh, we have done our penance. Uh, uh, and you don't even notice it. Ah, uh, uh, look at this. They upset with God. Have you ever been upset with God after you done did everything you thought was right? And you still God seems like he's still not giving you no award, giving you no, no clap, no, no applause. And they are upset. And they say, you don't even notice it. And here the Lord responds. Uh, he says, now I'll tell you why. I'll tell you, New Unity, I'll tell you, America, I'll tell you why I'm upset with America, because you are living in evil pleasure 
even while you are fasting, even though you're supposed to be, read it for yourself, verse 3, even though you're supposed to consecrate to me, even though you're supposed to sacrifice it, you're still doing everything during this season that you did during the Thanksgiving season. You're still eating just as much. You're still uh, televisioning just as much. You're still doing all those things. Can't you... Can't you uh, pull back for a moment? Remember when Jesus uh, was in the prayer garden? Well, uh, he's going to be there in a few weeks. We'll get there. Remember that night on that fateful night when the Lord, our Lord was in that garden and he came back. He said, what? Could you not pray with me one hour? And he went and prayed. Uh, and then the text says, and he went off and prayed, came back later. And they were still sleeping. He said, get up. He was upset. Get up. In other words, he said, get off that sofa. Get up. He said this to his disciples, uh, uh, and they, and then he went back and prayed a second time, and then he came back a third time, and they were set yet sleep again, and he said these awful words to them. He said, sleep on. And my brothers and sisters, it's a terrible thing uh, to hear God tell you to sleep on. Uh, somebody say, you got to wake up. Come on. It's time to wake up, New Unity. Wake up, America. We just can't talk about being a Christian nation. We can't just talk about being a people of, of Christianity. We we got to show it, show it, act like it, show God some sign, show the world some sign. Mm. He says, now look at this. Look at verse four. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? You're supposed to fast to get mess out of you. You're supposed to fast because you're consecrating yourself, your mind, your body, your spirit, all three. Uh-huh. Are in this in agreement. Come on here. Somebody write this down. Write this down. Every every married couple at some point, I would say, uh, Hoover, we probably ought to just do this on one one Wednesday night. Just say every married or getting ready to get married or whatever couple uh, just meet us uh, on one of these Wednesday nights uh, uh, somewhere in, in the year, every year. And all we're going to do is just look at one verse. We ain't looking at two. We ain't looking at three. We ain't looking at just one verse. One verse passed. Just one verse. You're going to Amos, and we're not going to talk about uh, uh, the rough places being made straight and the crooked places uh, 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 being made smooth and the glory of the Lord shall come down. No, we're just going to go to Amos 3 and 3. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Every married couple ought to look at that at least once a year. How can you walk with your husband? How can you walk with your wife unless you first be agreed? And here it is, God saying to us, he said, look at this in verse 4. Uh, what good is fasting doing? You ain't doing nothing you're still cussing you're still fighting you're still arguing you still got all that hell and you still got all that mess in you and fasting is supposed to pull it out of you because you're spending time with god and whenever you're spending time with god there will be a change you remember when jesus said to uh you remember when jesus said to the disciples uh, and to the people he said you cannot choose serve god and mammon Y'all remember that? You remember that as children? When we learn more Bible then, we, then, we, then at least in my case, I knew more Bible as a child than I knew as an adult. Ah, uh, because I didn't have all these things out the way on me. Wife and children and a mortgage and a car and a two dogs and this and that and yard and cutting the grass and blah, 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 and blah, 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 and age and all of the health issues that go with aging. Ah. Uh, that's why Paul says, uh, uh, serve the Lord with all your heart whenever you can. Don't get, get entwined with all of these other things. He says, what good is your fasting doing if it ain't going to make a change in you? What good is coming to new unity, coming to the church if it's going, not going to make a difference? This kind of fasting, he says, will never get you anywhere with me. Look what God says. He said, that's what you're going to do. You ain't doing it. You ain't doing it for me. He said, this is what I want. This is what I want. Uh, not this bowing down like a reed blowing in the wind. Not putting on sackcloth and cover your face with, with ashes. Uh, is that what you call fasting? God says, no, the kind of fast, verse 6, that I want is for you to stop uh, being mean. Look at this. Look at it. Look at it for yourself. Stop acting like you, like you don't know who you are. Better yet, whose you are. Stop oppressing people. You don't have to be no, 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 no boss man to be oppressed. You just, just your very attitude. I'm trying to help us. Just your very nature. When you walk among people in your home, on your job, on the bus stop, in the store, how are you conducting yourself? Stop oppressing people with your attitude, with your nastiness, with your sassiness. No, you suppose I'm just like my mother. I'm like my father. I'm like my sister. I'm like, no, no. And then you turn around and say, I'm on, I'm on. 
grown man. Ain't nobody. Well, which, which is it? You either like your mother, your father, sister, your brother, or you're your own person. Which one are you going to claim? You can't serve God on convenience. You can't say you like your mother when it's convenient. And then when it's not convenient, you want to say, I'm my own man. I'm my own, I'm my own woman. You got to stand for what you are one way or another. But either way, however you claim it, brothers and sisters, eventually God going to judge you for you. God going to judge you for you. Mother, father, sister, brother, be put aside. You going to be held into account. I'm going to be held in account. All of us going to be held in account. And so God says, no, the kind of fast that I want is for you to stop acting out. Stop oppressing those folk who work for you and work with you and you live with and you talk with and, she, and treat them fairly and give them the same type of respect. Uh, the text here says, pay them right. But I, I want to update it for all of us who understand where we are in the days of the world and the days of the economy. Uh, 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 God says, uh, uh, treat them right. This word economy, I wish I had time to preach. I got about seven more minutes. I got to quit, Brother Dixon. Uh, this word economy comes from the word economia, economia. That word means lack. Anytime you're dealing with economy, you're talking about a government or a system of lack. And in the economy of God, that's why we messed up. And man's economy is always talking about lack lack what you don't have and so they 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 put commercials out there to make you and i want to buy stuff that we don't need and we wear one time and you can't find it the next month or the next next season and we go buy it again because we got that lack man, man mentality that that's been placed on us but in god's but in god's economy brothers and sisters you don't have to worry about being lacking and, and trying to be hip or being fly or being uh in vogue or or or, or, or any of that you just know that God, the Lord, will make a way. And he is a way-making God. Somebody ought to say amen. He is a way-making God. Somebody ought to say amen. Say amen. Here he says now, treat people right. Stop oppressing people with your oppressive behavior, with the way you scowl, walk around, treating people. You won't speak. Speak, wait for somebody to speak to you first. Show them the God in you. Come on here. He says, I want you to share your food with the hungry, Sister Peggy Butler. I bring uh, bring right into your homes those who are helpless and, and poor and destitute. Clothe those who are, those who are cold. And, and don't hide yourself from the, your relatives who need you. And your relatives may not necessarily have grandma's blood in it. But remember Jesus when they say, Am I my brother's keeper? Jesus and Luke 15, Luke 10, rather. Jesus, yes, we are. We are our brother's keeper. And so you may not have grandma's blood in you, Sister Inel Cohen, but all of us, you ought to say it with me, are God's children. He says, now look at verse 8. He says, if you and I do these things, look at this. God's going to shed uh, his own glorious light on us. Somebody say amen. If we honor God. Do it God's way. Somebody write it down. We're going to do it God's way. Or make it personal. I'm going to do it God's way this year. Ah, uh, Listen to what he said. He said, he will heal you. Uh, why ain't I heal, Lord? Maybe, maybe I need to go back and read this and find out what I'm not doing. Maybe. He will heal you. Your godliness will lead you forward. Goodness will be like a shield before you. God will protect you. And the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Don't worry about all those backstabbers. God got them in control. Then when you call the Lord, uh-huh, what it says, yes, here am I. The Lord says, I'm here. He will quickly reply. Whenever you're going through, God won't, verse 9, God won't leave you stranded. Look at verse 9. All you need to do is stop mm, acting out and carrying on and forgetting that, that you are God's child. And that's why we go through Lent to remind us uh, that sometimes walking through this world, we start acting like the people around. Yes, we do. Um, uh, yes, we do. We start saying the things that they say, and, 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 and you can get comfortable with it, can't you? Uh, come on, uh, just talk to me. You can get, when I say you, I'm talking about Pastor Golden now. Uh, we can get comfortable with this, can't we? Easily uh, get comfortable in there. Uh in their in their environment um but like samson i like to talk about samson yeah every now and then you got to shake yourself brother and sister every now and then you got to shake yourself with all your frailties with all your weaknesses with all of your shortcomings don't let nobody uh tell you about your weaknesses and never remind you that you was also a strong man samson shake yourself shake yourself shake yourself and listen to what god says uh, all you need to do is 
stop acting like that and watch and see if God won't bless you. Stop spreading all these vicious rumors about people. What you don't know about me, you don't need to know. And what I don't know about you, I don't need to know. And if I do know, amen, the best thing for me to do is keep my mouth sealed and let the Lord Work it out. Feed the hungry, verse 10. Help those in trouble. Then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you shall be as bright as day, and God going to guide you. Isn't that good news? Huh? Isn't that good news? I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with mine eye all the way from earth to heaven i will guide thee with mine eye hark the herald angel singing who will work for me today fields are white and harvest waiting who will show the narrow way? I will guide. Come on here. He says, I'm going to guide you. You just do it my way. I know it may seem uh, uh, foolish at times. It may seem contrary uh, to, to, to the mind of man. But remember, he says, Paul writes to us in the New Testament, doesn't he? He said that, and the carnal mind is that enmity is a, with God. The carnal, mind can, the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. Those who are not saved, they have not been converted in their mind, in their heart. They don't understand why we do what we do. And sometimes, <laughs> guess what, beloved? Sometimes we don't understand why we do what we do. But we do it because God done, God has commanded us to do it. Amen. Sometimes we want to act crazy just like everybody else. I'm talking about myself again. Amen. But we got to remember who we belong to. <laughs> Somebody ought to hear me tonight. Amen. Wrapping up. He says, now your sons will reveal, verse 12, the long deserted ruins of your cities. Ah, and you will be known as the people who rebuilt Baltimore. Look at that. Look at it. Look at verse uh, 12. Y'all see this? Your sons will rebuild the long deserted ruins of your cities. And you will be known as the people who rebuild their walls and their cities. Your sons and your daughters, I'm adding in there, going to rebuild Baltimore City. If you keep my day, uh, hallow my day, uh, salute me on my day, worship me on my day. You got all the other, day, other days, but honor me. Then the Lord, verse 14, look at this, we're closing, will be our delight. And I will see to it that you ride high and get your full share of the blessings that I promised to Jacob. For I, the Lord, have spoken. And I want to close tonight by saying new unity. When the Lord speaks, brothers and sisters, you ain't got to worry about it if it's going to come to pass. If God say you're blessed, you're blessed. God say you're healed, you're healed. And it may not look like what you and I expect it to look like, but claim it anyway. Walk on in it anyway. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Pardon me. I will guide thee. I will guide thee. I will guide thee with mine eye. All the way from earth to heaven, I will guide thee with mine eye. How many of y'all can hear the old deacon saying, If you cannot pray like Peter, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell the love of jesus you can say he died for all i will guide thee i will guide thee come on put your hands up church i will guide thee come on come on with mine eye put those hands up all the way from even on the telephone come on earth to heaven I will guide thee with mine eye. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of appreciation tonight. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him tonight. Oh, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. This, I know this is, you know, when we come to church and, and the preacher wants to, you know, he wants to, most, most preachers want to see the congregation shout and get happy. But every now and then, <laughs> 
you got to do it God's way. <laughs> uh -huh. And doing this series season known as Lent, hey man, we got to, this is all about sacrifice. This is all about repenting. Yes, it is. It's all about reflecting. Amen. Yes, it is. And it's hard work, y'all. Listen, I want you to know it's hard work because who don't want to be happy? And you still can be happy. But who wants to look at themselves and see themselves in a in a uh, less than perfected state, particularly when the Lord done rescued you? Amen. When the Lord done brought you out of so much stuff like he done did most of us. Ain't that right? Most of us here tonight can say the Lord done rescued us. Isn't that right? The Lord done brought us out of a whole lot of stuff. But every now and then we got to reach back and help somebody else. Amen. We got to reach back and help somebody else. And let them know what the Lord, sister, oh, I want to be like Brother Randolph. Oh, I want to be like Sister Inel. Oh, I want to be like Sister Zen. Oh, that's good. And you should. Paul says what? Follow me what? As I follow Christ. But brothers and sisters, the same, if you, if you knew my story, <laughs> you might pick another mentor. <laughs> you might put another, you might pick a, you might say, well, now that I know her story, I think I'm going to follow somebody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God is good. We're going to pray, and then we're going to hear from our leader tonight. Amen. We're coming to the altar now. And there may be someone, I know most of us, I know most of the phone numbers I'm seeing here, leader, are people that we know. There's only one that I don't recognize, somebody out there in Sister Vanessa Thomas's area, Aaron Chase at 335, that I don't recognize. But all the rest of them I recognize as members of our church. Amen. But even still, during this season, during this season, during this season, amen. We're going to reach out to the Lord. Father, we're praying right now. In the, you're praying with me, church, in the name of Jesus. We're praying in that name that's above every name, that matchless name. We're praying, Lord, that you would touch these hearts of ours, strengthen us, help us, oh God, to do right, help us to be right, help us to love right, help us to look at ourselves and not others, help us to hold on to your unchanging hand. In these very difficult days, Lord, and they are difficult times, time is filled with swift transition. Lord, we see so much um, pain in the world, so much hatred and so much, um, oh, sin and debauchery and all the rest, Lord. But we ask you, Lord, to hold our hand while we run this race. Hold our hand, Lord, while we run this race. Hold our hand, Lord. We cannot make it without you. Hold our hand like a big brother holding his little sister's hand as they cross Orleans Street, Vanessa. Hold our hands, Lord, while we run this race. We ask you in Jesus' name, Lord, to be with our children, be with our grandchildren, remember our spouses, remember our loved ones, remember our neighbors. We hear about fires next door, and we hear about so many situations and all the rest in our community. Keep us all safe in your, in your prayer. We place in the blood of Jesus Christ on our in our community, Lord, we're taking these 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 consecrated bottles of oil seriously, Lord. We're gonna put it in our purse. We get a little smaller bottle and keep it in our purse. Who knows? On the bus stop, we may shake somebody's hand. They don't know that we already had our hands anointed when we shake their hand. Or maybe somebody's distressed in the hospital room. That's Sister Rhonda Thomas, and you can pull that young lady to the side and just have whisper a two minute prayer, maybe a one minute prayer. It ain't in the length; it's in the quality of reaching heaven. Lord, help us. Remember our senior. Thank you for Sister Hilda and Sister Janie and Sister Christine, Sister Laverne, and Brother David. And I know I'm missing at least two or three other persons by name, but all of them, Lord, bless them. Our own mother, Sister Porter, Mother Ivy Mae Scott. Thank you, Lord. And all the rest, Sister Janola Thompson, Sister Sarah, we Sister Sarah Williams, but Sarah Harris, and so many others that I'm not calling right now, Lord, but remember every one of them, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Bless these couples trying to raise their children, trying to do the right thing, struggling sometimes, many times, with the, for the finances, for scholarship, for schools, or, um, for uh, the classwork, for the books, and for the clothes and the things that are necessary. But, Lord, we put our trust in you. We put our confidence in you. We put our confidence in you. We thank you, O oh Lord, in this season of renewal, in this season of reflection. And, yes, we say, Lord, in this season of preparation, we're getting ready. My Lord, getting us ready for that great day. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name and all the church together said,
Amen. Come on, let's let's salute the Lord one more time. Come on, one more time, one more time. Come on, even you on the phone. Come on, come on, come on, even on the phone. That's right, even on the phone. Let's salute the Lord tonight. Wonderful, wonderful. Come on, share Hoover, say a word to us tonight, won't you? And then we're going to wrap up and close any announcement, anything else that we may have overlooked, forgot to do, or, or somehow omitted, remind us, and then we'll be ready, amen, to close and thank the Lord that we have done, we done done what the Lord told us to do, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Indeed, we have heeded to this call of obedience on tonight. Hallelujah. What a powerful message from this 58th chapter of Isaiah. As the Lord ever speaks to us and we hear him as he's speaking to us even now, yeah. even now. Amen. We look with great anticipation, New Unity, for how the Lord is going to bless us in a mighty way. Yes. How he is going to continue to speak to us as our pastors reminded us that we focus, that we focus, and that we stay focused. Looking forward to seeing you all on Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for our prayer time right here on this same Zoom channel. We'll see you again at 9.45 and at 10 um, a.m. is the sit down time for our church meeting. You heard it right, Saturday morning, 9.45. Every new Unity member is called to meet us here on Zoom 1 for a church meeting. Amen. Very important that you be here, that you be represented, and that you hear it firsthand for yourself as the Lord continues to speak and provide guidance and clarity. And as he is preparing us, new unity, for this new chapter that he has in store for us. And then we'll be right back on Sunday morning at 11 a.m., Remembering also it's our Holy Communion worship. And so we'll be coming on Sunday morning with our Holy Communion. You know, in your commitment bags that you received two weeks ago, you had additional kits for your communion kits. So you have enough to be able to last you through the next quarter. So thanking God for each of you once again, thanking you once again, Deacon High, for the wonderful way in the, that you've taken your charge of having the ashes ready for this Ash Wednesday Sunday ash wednesday service on tonight and so we thank the lord for your faithfulness to the kingdom as well pastor golden amen 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 again again new unity thank every one of you all you wonderful leaders co-leaders thank you so very very much every ministry leader now we have for those of you who are in in-person worship with us uh, two weeks ago uh, you had this red folder that we all received inside. I just want to remind you, we had this beautiful, almost like a placard uh, paper. It's not the regular uh, typing paper. It's, uh, uh, it's not poster paper. I, I, I don't know what the name is. So the Tan would know. Cardstock. Cardstock. Thank you. That's right. It's cardstock paper. We got lift every voice and sing. We'll sing that again next Sunday. Amen. And all the words are here. Amen. We're going to sing it on this beautiful. And then... Uh, we got bowed down in worship. We remember that brother Dixon. That was in the in the bulletin or in the program last Sunday. Bow down and worship him. Bow down and oh worship him. Bow down by Bishop Paul S. Morton. We had this beautiful bulletin. I'm keeping mine for many years to come. I thought this was one of the finest covers we've ever had, and we've had some to speak of. Celebrate the. Uh, uh, Black History Month, amen, this beautiful cover that Deacon Randolph designed, and then the program inside, I'm keeping mine, even though that's all past, and uh, we have the, on the website, we have the scriptures, uh, you can find all the scriptures, can you uh, tell me, I thought I printed mine out tonight, yes, uh, chair, but I left it, but I wanted to know, let everybody know what we're reading uh, next week, amen. We have it here, even now, Pastor, it's Isaiah chapter 30. And our theme, Woe to Humanity. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Isaiah chapter 30, Woe to Humanity. Now, now I told you we are we are going deeper, right? The first week, the second week. You know, when you read, when you read the divine comedy, and that's just the name of it, nothing comedy comical about it. Uh, the man uh, Dante goes on this descent into into uh into Hades, hell. Uh, the, the, the whole um, obje uh, object of, uh, of that first portion is to show you that and before you can go up to heaven, paradise, you got to first go down. It's all about going down. And so we're going down into the bowels, down into the depths, uh, the groanings. Yes, what it was. It was groaning on that cross. Yes, it was. Wasn't no fun. That's why we, we, don't, we don't wear crucifixes. 
uh, around our neck. That is a crucifix, it's a cross with Jesus on it. We wear the cross, but, but not the crucifixes. And so we the groanings of it. And so if you still have your folder from last uh, week, week before, bring it Sunday as we are still remembering Black History Month as we are celebrating. Still, we're into this season. Amen. Oh, let me tell you, Sister Florence Thomas and Sister Helen Mullen, if you want to know anything happened 67 years ago, not six or seven, I say 67, 67 years ago, they had a bulletin for it. Marrying your mother and your mother, Denise, kept, kept every bulletin program. And you say, that was Reverend Blue. They said, no, it wasn't Blue, it was Brown. Oh, that was Reverend White, it wasn't right, it was Green. They could tell you who the man was and who sang and what scripture he preached out of and, and uh, <laughs> where he was sitting and spill water on y'all brand new carpet, whatever. They had all the stuff written down in the program. And so uh, I tried to every now and then be sure there's certain things that really speak to my heart that I keep. But some people like Denise and others, they keep everything that the church produces. And that's all right because those, those are what we call chroniclers, amen. They chronicle the history of our of our church. Amen. Bless you, Deacon Vanessa Thomas, our sister. Bless you, Deacon uh, Rhonda Thomas. We salute you and all these wonderful ushers who serve us week after week and greet us, Sister Thelma and Sister Tanya and all the rest. Blessings on you, Mother uh, Deacon Rosa Porter, Sister Cassandra Orduna, this wonderful person who from Chase, I'm not sure who that was. They just hung up. I guess they say, Pastor, you're talking too long. But uh, whoever they were, I'm not sure who they were, but I know 335. Well, many years ago, Brother Randolph, uh, uh, whenever you want to know who, who, where, what was on Dot's phone number, what was Brother Allen's phone number, what was so-and-so's phone number, all you did was say the last four because everybody's extension was 410335. So you just gave the last four. So I know that Chase from 100 years ago, that was somebody from Chase. Amen. But thank God they was with us tonight. Bless you. Uh, uh, Brother John Kearney, I'm using not to hear from Brother Kearney. Brother Kearney, you want to say anything? I know you're still working, but he always tunes in. Isn't that something? So you can do what you want to do, church. You can do what you want to do. You may not be able to always participate 100%, but don't tell me you can't, you can't be connected to your church. God bless you, Sister Nadine Jackson. Bless you to the Bennett family, uh, Minister Dixon, M Minister Smith, um, who are Brother Randolph, his family, Brother Derek. Uh, who am I overlooking? Sister Denise Huntley. Sister Denise Huntley, uh, First Lady and I made up made a pledge to ourselves. We're going to pick you up every time we go to have an in-person service. So on March the 12th, you be ready. We're going to stop at your house, pick you up. You have no more excuse. Every time we got an in-person service, we stop in on Gorsuch to pick you up, uh, cousin. Amen. Sister Denise Huntley. So you just know that. You don't have to wait for your son no more. We're going to pick you up. We've already made that commitment. But every one of you, thank you so very much. We love you. Have a great night. We'll see you Saturday morning. Lifting our right hands to God, even now. Lord, we thank you tonight for the awesomeness of your spirit, for the awesomeness of your presence. Be with us even now. We praise your name in Jesus' name and in the season of renewal, reflection, and preparation. Amen, amen, and amen. Go in the spirit of Christ, everybody. Love everybody. We'll see you now. Good night. Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you so very much, every one of you. Amen.